we just reviewed the iQ9 Pro, the top model of the Vivo subsidiary. We still use smartphones today, therefore we didn't think twice before ordering the latest iQ10 Pro model. In order to give you the most accurate information about this new product, we will customarily examine the changes compared to the previous version, and thoroughly test the smartphone in the complete review. The new limited edition iQ10 Pro's appearance is extremely similar to that of the iQ9 Pro, which it replaces. With a leather structure and stripes in BMW colors, the back is primarily white. Only the upper portion, which houses the cameras, differs. This time, the rear camera module and the entire top third of the back cover are both glossy black. The new limited edition iQ10 Pro's appearance is extremely similar to that of the iQ9 Pro, which it replaces. With a leather structure and stripes in BMW colors, the back is primarily white. Only the upper portion, which houses the cameras, differs. This time, the rear camera module and the entire top third of the back cover are both glossy black. The smartphone's curved sides let it fit comfortably in your palm, and as soon as you grasp it, you'll know it's a premium flagship model from the company. Aluminum was used for the construction, and the processing was done to a very high standard. Regarding the organization of the smartphone's many components, nothing has changed. Everything is still located precisely where you would expect it to be. A speaker, microphone, SIM card slot, and charging USB-C port are located on the bottom edge. The second microphone and IR sensor are on the other, upper side. The right side features a location for the volume control buttons, as well as a button for turning on or off the smartphone. The left side is empty. The 6.78 inch diagonal AMOLED display from the previous generation iQ10 Pro was carried over to the current model. We are delighted that the panel is a Samsung E5 with a high refresh rate of 120Hz and a resolution of 1440 by 3200 pixels, which is gradually becoming the industry standard. The third generation of LTPO technology, which handles automatic refresh rate change based on current needs, is the uniqueness. Another benefit is the display's high brightness, which can reach up to 1500 nits and makes it brilliantly legible even in direct sun light on a sunny day. The panel has a 29 aspect ratio, a pixel density of 423 ppi, supports HDR10+, and fully complies with DCI-P3. Given that the display is currently practically the best on the market, we have absolutely no concerns about it. Some people may not like the display's curved edges since they reflect light. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 CPU from the American manufacturer Qualcomm powers the smartphone. It is constructed using 4 nanometers technology and has 8 cores. The 3.2 GHz clock speed of the high-performance core is based on the ARM Cortex-X2 architecture. The remaining 4 cores, which are more energy efficient, are based on the Cortex-A510 architecture, with a frequency of 1.8 GHz, while the other 3 are based on the Cortex-A710, with a frequency of 2.5 GHz. We had a model with 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, and 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. It is obvious from the specifications that we do not need to discuss adequate performance of all. You can play any game with such hardware without any hesitation. The new Saku 10 Pro can boldly claim the distinction of being the world's fastest smartphone charger. We haven't got the chance to test out 200 watt charging on any other smartphone yet, but it supports it. The world's quickest charging technology is this one. We were astonished by the quickness, even with the 120 watt charge that the Xiaomi Mix 4 came with. Recall that the Mix 4 took approximately 14 minutes to charge from 20% to 100%. With an incredible price, a 200 watt charger can charge the iQ10 Pro in just 10 minutes. We also offer 50 watt wireless charging and 10 watt reverse charging, in addition to quick wire charging. However, the durability is not very good. Once again, the battery life on a single charge only reaches the standard of less than one day. Additionally, the battery percentages in this situation deplete fairly quickly, necessitating twice daily recharges. In contrast, it's ideal for your smartphone to charge from 0% to 50% in 3 minutes, and from 100% to 100% in 10 minutes. With such rapid charging, the battery's lifespan is in doubt. We have the choice of quick or super rapid charging after connecting to the charger, but in both situations, the smartphone gets fairly warm. The new iQ10 Pro runs on Android 12, and has the Origin OS Ocean graphic superstructure, just as the Vivo X80 Pro or the iQ9 Pro model from a year ago. One of the most adaptable superstructures we have encountered is this one. Numerous features of the environment can be altered to your preferences, including the default wallpaper, animations that play while the device is charging where you touch it, and the colors and shapes of specific objects. The superstructure is extremely great, in our opinion, both graphically and practically. Unfortunately, we occasionally noticed very slight pauses that we did not see in earlier models. A few occasions, some programs became stuck, and once the wallpaper actually vanished from the home screen's backdrop. We did, however, receive two updates with some problem fixes within the first week of testing. 
It is clear that the maker cares about his surroundings and wants to make improvements. We tested the brand new flagship model from the subsidiary living in the Chinese version, which is typically known for having issues with alerts. Despite varying settings and locking across open applications, these can display later or just after starting a particular application. The inability to display notifications from specific applications on the always-on display is another drawback. Here, only alerts for missed calls or SMS messages are shown. Contrarily, NFC payments function using the Google Wallet app, which you simply need to install and set as your default. This is true even though the software is only available in Chinese. The iQoo 10 Pro's camera hardware is from the previous year. The sensors are the same ones we had a chance to observe in the iQoo 9 Pro model. The V1 Plus chip from the Vivo Workshop, whose goal is to enhance photographic output, is innovative. The main camera's gimbal stabilization and all the other cameras' standard optical stabilization are advantages. In a word, the primary camera of the flagship model from iQoo is superb. It has an incredibly good dynamic range, which helps to ensure that there are very few overexposed or underexposed spots in the pictures. Shadowy areas are not unnecessarily overly dark, and similarly, brightly lit structures are not. Regarding the colors, they are a little bit exaggerated in comparison to reality. They are more saturated, and the image has a higher contrast overall. You can see how the system has slightly altered the image if you examine the shot right away after capturing it. The end effect is stunning, razor sharp, and colorful photography. This smartphone can easily navigate a dark subway with a sunny sky at the other end. The dimly lighted interior is obviously also ornamented and clearly illuminated, yet these photographs are nonetheless incredibly interesting to look at and attract your attention. The ultra-wide angle camera, which is a viewing angle up to 150 degrees wider than the main camera, also has a so-called fisheye option. The output from the ultra-wide angle camera is still above average, despite its slightly poor dynamic range and cooler, brighter colors. If we concentrate on the shadows, they are sometimes darker due to the weaker dynamic, but they still have a tendency to resist turning completely black. As a result, even in the shadows, the details are visible, though they are less obvious than when using the main camera. However, since the 40x zoom is only digital, this is more of a marketing issue. The greatest optical zoom in this situation is 3x, which is still a respectable amount. We can get extremely excellent night images even without turning on the night mode, because the longer shutter speed is automatically adjusted while taking pictures in the evening in regular mode. Compared to photos taken with the primary camera, those taken with the ultra-wide camera have somewhat darker, warmer, and more vibrant images. Even so, the sharpness is still excellent and comparable to that of a telephoto lens. The smartphone also supports Wi-Fi version 6, NFC, and Bluetooth 5.2 for additional wireless connectivity. The loudspeaker, which we also use for phone conversations, plays Namiet rather frequently on the iQoo 10 Pro, even though it lacks a second discrete speaker on top. Even though it is not among the very best on the market, the overall sound output is respectable. Even at louder volumes, the music is rather clear and well-balanced. Similar to the iQoo 9 Pro from the previous year, we had the chance to test the current flagship model from Vivo's subsidiary, the iQoo 10 Pro, in a special BMW edition. In comparison to the previous generation, it offers a refreshed Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor Processor, a redesigned appearance, and especially lightning quick charging of up to 200 watt. The smartphone charges in roughly 10 minutes, and has a 200 watt maximum charging capacity, making it the quickest charging device in the world right now. Overall, the smartphone retains a very high level, whether from the point of view of performance, camera quality, charging, or unlocking speed, utilizing the ultrasonic fingerprint reader in the display. The other metrics remained essentially unaltered compared to last year's model. The Chinese version's drawbacks include various pre-installed programs that are useless in our nation, and notifications that are occasionally delayed or malfunction. Thank you for watching, I hope this video was helpful for you, have a nice day and see you soon.